Today in Latin grammar, we're going to talk about indirect statements. But before we do that, let's talk about the difference between direct and indirect statements. A direct statement, like we have up top here, is when someone is quoted as saying something. So Caesar, said my teacher, crossed the Rubicon, is a direct statement by the teacher. Whereas an indirect statement is when we do not have quotes and we use that to separate the two halves of their sentence. So my teacher said that Caesar crossed the Rubicon. So in Latin, we need to find our four parts of an indirect statement. You need to find the subject of the sentence, which remember could be implied in the main verb. You need a main verb that conveys conversation or thought. I like to call it a head verb, some process that you use your head for, speaking, thinking, talking, etc., etc. You need to find your direct object within the sentence and an infinitive. And so here in our sentence, magister pueros discere dicit, we have magister as the subject and dicit as the main verb. And this is translated normally, the teacher says. But then we have to add the word that. And then we're going to take our direct object as a new subject on the other side of that. So we're going to take pueros as the students, and they're going to work as the subject of the infinitive discere. And we translate the infinitive as though it is a main verb going with your direct object. So that the students are learning. It's a present infinitive, so are learning goes with the students. So let's take that apart a little more and go through our steps. So you find your four parts, your subject, your main verb, your direct object, and your infinitive. The first half, as I said before, is translated normally. The teacher says your subject and your main verb. Then you have to add the word that after your main verb. Now your direct object, pueros, is going to act like a new subject on the other side of that. And your infinitive is going to act like a main verb that goes with your direct object, pueros. So the teacher says that the students are learning. Now this is a present active infinitive. And of course we know that there are many other types of infinitives and other main verbs besides present indicative. So let's look how each infinitive is translated differently. So let's first look at present infinitives. The basic rule for a present infinitive is that it occurs at the same time as the main verb. So like we've just seen, magister pueros discere dicit, dicit is in the present, so we're going to translate discere as though it occurs in the present. The teacher says that the boys are learning. Now if we change our main verb to perfect, dixit, said, this is going to change the meaning of our present infinitive, because our present infinitive is going to happen at the same time as dixit, which is now in the past. So the teacher said that the boys were learning. And then if we push that into the future, magis de pueros discere dicet, the teacher will say that the boys are learning. If we look at perfect infinitives, the general rule here is that the perfect infinitive always occurs before the main verb. So here we have our present main verb. The teacher says that the boys have learned. Magister pueros di dicise dicit. So note that your main verb is says and your infinitive is in the past compared to that have learned. The perfect main verb dicks it here. We have to push our infinitive di dicise even farther in the past. So the teacher said that the boys had learned. And then for the future, again, it's going to mirror the present. So Magus de Pueros did a kiss a dick at. The teacher will say that the boys have learned. And finally, future infinitives. These occur after the main verb, so they have a future sense all the time compared to when the main verb is happening. So here, Magus de Pueros doctoros esse dick at. The teacher says that the boys will learn. Present verb says infinitive has to be pushed into the future. Now we go with a perfect verb, dixit. The teacher said that the boys would learn. And again, the future main verb mirrors the present main verb. The teacher says, will say that the boys will learn. Now let's go through one more example, and this one's a little more complicated because it's got more than just the four parts of an indirect statement. So again, we need to find our subject and our main verb. And so here, it's puer and dicit. The boy says, and we always have to add that. And next we're going to find our direct object in our infinitive to form the second half of this. And now here's something tricky. We have two accusatives in this sentence, say and flamas. But this is a good example because often the pronoun occurs 
and is going to be your direct object because someone says something about themselves. In actual Latin literature, this is used all the time, especially with Caesar and Cicero. So the boy says that, say, he, we just say, has seen. And what has he seen? Flames on the hill of the city. So flamas, your other accusative, is going to be the direct object of your infinitive, which now works like a main verb that goes with the direct object. So the boy says that he has seen flames on the hill of the city.